for me sports has been like a meditation right okay. and i relate a lot between my improvement in sport and my mm. improvement in business right mm. keep doing a bit better etc and therefore when you play sport you realize that while that might be a strength mm. the other side you would also want to have that winner shot where you could hit a winner rather than just yeah. trying to put the ball back so for me whether it's running or sport it gives me a lot of time to think about how improvements can happen and a lot of things i can relate between sport as well as how i behave my best half marathon was 145 minutes and about 2022 seconds uh, my best 10k has been 47 and a half sometimes it's not about what you will gain but what you will lose by not doing it right one is do what you love right so take up a sport or take up a next career option if you really like it like doing it mm. i think a lot of disappointment happens when you have expectations and uh, you build up those expectations either within yourself mm. or with people around you yeah, messi says that you know uh, you know it took me 17 years to become an overnight success hi welcome to the other side i'm your host dilip an entrepreneur and an endurance athlete In this podcast, we will explore the experiences of high-performing individuals while unpacking their mental and physical fitness routines that took them to where they are. For this episode, I'll be speaking with Rishi Vasudev. He is currently the co-founder and CEO of Goat Brand Labs, one of India's leading D2C brand aggregator. Rishi previously was a senior vice president at Flipkart and Myntra, leading their fashion business. and has been a ceo to multiple growth companies like lifestyle international and calvin klein but today we don't talk doing business in e-commerce d2c fashion or raising venture capital we will discover how playing different sports has shaped rishi's personal and professional life his physical and mental fitness routines his approach towards sports performance and training and the secret to start playing a new sport as you age so let's explore his other side Before you get to the podcast I have one request if you're listening to this on YouTube please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified on future releases if you're listening it on Spotify please click on the follow button on top left corner and click on the bell button and if you find the content useful please leave a rating and if you're listening this on Apple podcast please click on the plus sign on top right corner you can also leave a rating and review if you like the content This would mean a lot and encourages me to keep creating useful content in future. Thank you for your patience. Now let's get to the podcast. All right, Rishi, uh, thank you for doing this. I know it's been long time due. I had to chase you down with multiple messages, but you've been very kind. Um, and after the last weekend when we ran together, I absolutely enjoyed uh, the 12 kilometers we ran. And I told myself that this is going to be super fun to sit down because. Um, I got to see that other side of you when we were running. Uh so let's st- get started by uh telling it out that I know you're training for Tata Mumbai Marathon uh, yes. coming up in uh, January. Uh you want to put it out what your goal is? Yeah, my goal is to do it at sub 155. Everything's going well, I'll push for around 150. Terrific! Yeah, so uh, finishing half marathon at 155, and you're doing Tata Mumbai Marathon this is which year? So this will be my third time. Uh, last I ran uh, just before COVID COVID came came in, which is January of uh, February of 2020. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was going well to hit 146, and then on the pedal road, sure. uh, you know, I got cramps and somehow pulled myself to still do it at 149. But mm-hmm. since then, I have you can see that now my goals are. Uh, reasonable <laughs> it is never because of the last two years yeah. and all the stress of the startup but yeah. Uh, yeah i'll be happy if i finish around 150 no i think it's, it's still a stellar goal to uh, come closer to 155 which means you should be probably running about 510 515 uh, per kilometer right 5 minute 15 second per kilometer that's yeah. uh, that's stellar so what do you think you will have to do something different this time around to or what have you thought that what you will have to do something different this time to get you cross the finish line at that uh, desired time yeah i think uh, the the beauty of uh, bombay marathon is that you know you 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 have a very different terrain on different parts of the race so the first part the first 10k you are running 
uh, over the bridge and uh, once you come back this is the ceiling bridge the ceiling yeah. bridge once you come back from the ceiling bridge and then you start the whole incline which is the pedal road where it tests you that how fit your body is yeah. and then the last stretch which i have uh, not made the best use of that if your legs are uh, you not cramping then then there is a whole uh, you know uh, stretch where you can run fast run down and then through chopati and the golden necklace you have a flat stretch where you could make up uh, and and have a good finish so uh, so this time the strategy would be that uh, not start as fast as i did last time maybe conserve uh, myself hydrate myself well and practice for that as well because the humidity as well as the incline are two things which which are killer and uh, my body is not uh, taken to that given the very different training conditions in uh, bangalore Uh, but yeah if i cross that then i look forward to really stretching myself and pushing myself in the last bit so that uh, i can do better okay rishi so um, so you are a very tactical guy you are a data guy because clearly you have broken down 21 kilometers to figure out what your execution points right so let's talk data um, for the nerds out there let's talk about numbers what are your 10k best 5k best and previous half marathon best okay So let me give you uh, my running career has just been about four years. So mm. I started running in two thousand eighteen, okay. end of two thousand seventeen. But two thousand eighteen is when I started, mm. uh, and my peak was two thousand nineteen and about mid of two thousand twenty. So most of the data is from that time. So my best half marathon was one forty five minutes mm. and about twenty twenty two seconds. Uh, my best ten k has been forty seven and half. My best five k has been. Uh, 22 minutes 22 seconds wow. so yes these are some my yeah 1k has been around 345 a mile has been 645 so wow so so the people who are unaware what numbers we are talking about we are saying that you ran uh, 10 kilometers and 21 kilometers on an average of 4 minute 45 seconds uh, per kilometer that's what we are talking about and uh, you did all of that uh, at an ideal age when people are actually going and playing golf Uh, and they won't uh, dare think of running, and we'll get to that. Um, uh, talk about your running career. You started two thousand eighteen. Um, what made you choose running? What was the the kind of choice led which led you to say that? Chalo, let's start running now. Yeah. So um, so again, going back a few years before running, uh, you know, I I was not a very fit guy. Uh, while I loved playing sport, but. you know initial years of your career and when you are in your 20s and 30s you you believe that you know everything's fine your health is good you will play on the weekend and get fit and uh, that's when it hits you when you go for your first overall health check up and then you realize that <laughs> yeah. you know whether it is diabetes or yeah. cholesterol and all of these things start coming up on your chart yeah um, so around when i was about um, 34 which is 2007 Uh, i said let me start getting uh, take up one sport at a time and get um, you know pick up some efficiency in that because in school while i used to play a lot i was good in a few sports but i was never an athlete mm. uh, but first i took up squash played squash for about 3 mm. 4 years mm. uh, post that i took up tennis and mm. played mm. tennis for 3 4 years and uh, we were in masuri on a holiday uh, my wife had signed up for uh, there was a masuri Uh, half marathon uh, there was 5k 10k so she had signed up for 5k so she dragged me along and i said okay i can run 5k i had not registered so but there was no i didn't get an entry in 5k but there somebody who was missing 10k so they gave me that person's bib <laughs> okay. uh, and i had to really struggle to complete that 10k, 10K yeah. it was masuri it was really elevation yeah. yes i walked ran and uh, somehow completed in 1 hour 6 minutes or something uh, but after that i was not feeling good about it saying mm. you know that's that i'm not healthy or i'm not fit if i can't run 10k whatever the terrain may be so in 2018 you know i read somewhere that zuckerberg had taken this goal of running mm. 500 miles in a year mm. so i took a new year resolution uh, let me try and run 500 kilometers this year okay right uh, i ran for a couple of months and uh, i started getting pain in my knee okay and i got paranoid because i love playing sport and i was like if knees if something happens to my knees uh i mean there's no know, movement there's no movement and that's the end of any sport i would right. probably just be swimming or yeah. playing chess so i stopped for a month in march 
uh, and then again read up more and I saw the people who were running like thousands of kilometers yeah. and nothing had happened. So yeah. um, later I realized that, you know, as you keep running, different parts of the body tell you yeah. they're not strong enough and yeah. pain is just the way to express that. Uh, so then by about August, I had completed my 500 and I just increased the goal to 800. I finished the year close to a thousand kilometers wow. because I realized that I was going well and I kept increasing my goal. Uh, that chart is still on my cupboard. Uh, so that's I one thing you should be proud that you beat uh, Zuckerberg for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but what I also realized that, you know, as you run more, the parts in your body, different parts get used when yeah. you're running. The parts which are not strong enough, they start to pain. Hmm. And I've gone through all kinds of pains. I've started with my knee, my shin, my ankle, uh, my toes. and. Uh, but for the last year, year and a half, I have just had soreness of muscle because of long runs. But hmm. uh, touch wood, I've had no pain in any part of the body. And yeah. and that means that a lot of those parts, as I use them more, got strengthened. Yeah. So so the year, so, so towards the end of the year, I thought, let me run uh, a half marathon and see how I can, yeah. how good I am or how, how much can I run. And uh, so I ran the Bangalore half marathon, not knowing whether I would... Uh, because those runs that I'm talking about were 10k runs on the treadmill. Mm. I was just okay. running for distance. Okay. So I went for the Bangalore half marathon. Uh, one of my cousins, who's a very good runner, uh, said, so he said, I'll pace you. So I had no clue whether I'll finish at 2 or 2.30 or 2.45 or yeah. below 2. Yeah, this is 2 hour 45 minutes. 2, two hour 45 minutes. A minute we are talking and about. a lot of people said, if you do be below 2, it's like a That's great a goal deep. because many yeah. people have been running for years and not sure. been able to beat that barrier. And I was, in 2008, I was 40, 45, 46 years old, right? yeah. 45 years old. So uh, I ended up at 156 and I said, wow, so this is something this totally is unexpected. <laughs> yeah. uh, but maybe the stamina was because I have been playing, playing sports. sports. Yeah. So post that, I did the Mumbai Marathon in uh, January of 2019 yeah. and I got cramps. Uh, that was the first time I was experiencing Bombay Marathon. I got cramps. And I said, I need to get coaching, training. So I signed up with, with a coach T. And uh, so two years then I trained with him. Uh, and then startup happened. Yeah. Uh, and then the second wave of COVID and startup. So uh, so around 2021, well, I've kept running in this past two years, but yeah. my timings have declined and sure. my lifestyle has changed. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep up with both. But yeah, yeah so now you're thinking about growth, both in your startup and in your fitness. Yes, right? yes. It's so these are two parallel tracks in my life which are going. Yeah. In both, I refresh, look at every day is day sure. one. So we right. look at what's whatever we built till now. What can we do next? And, yeah. And yeah, so yes. yeah. When you were talking about soreness, I just uh, uh, I just remember that um, I read somewhere that if you're an endurance athlete, uh, the second partner you every night go uh, go to the bed is your soreness. Yes, uh, yes, you can't get rid of it, right? Yes, so yes. as endurance athletes, you have to accept it. You will always have the soreness till the time you train. It's like your stress. Yeah. If you do not have enough things to stress about, you feel you are not doing enough so running is also like that, that if you don't have soreness yeah, yeah then you feel guilty that you have not, uh, not done probably enough, yeah. Yeah, done enough miles yeah, or yeah. enough kilometers in that yeah, yeah. yeah so what's your uh, so i'm just curious this lot to unpack uh, the fact that um, you know you're an entrepreneur uh, uh, early stages of startup <laughs> What's a typical routine like i mean day routine how do you wind up your day what's your routine like yeah so so most of my uh, exercise and running gets done in the morning. So therefore, uh, the day starts a little late in terms of work. So office starts at around 10. And I have, you know, I've consciously not tried starting at 8.30 or 9 because I want that morning uh, hours to me to be able to <clears throat> do my exercise. So you're running. very particular that that's blocked out for yes, your that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 10 o'clock is when office starts and work starts uh, because there's no time in the morning to even catch up on mails or calls or anything. So till 10, it's uh, it's uh, either the exercise or the uh, travel to office. Uh, and then once it starts at 10, then it goes on. Then there is no uh, no end time in, in a way. Yeah. So, But most days I leave office by around 8, 8.30 and I'm home at 9, 9.30. 9.30, okay. Yeah. okay. So, so that's the time. And then there are calls that you make after that. So then it can go on till... 10.30, 11, mm -hmm. even 11.30 in the night. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes it's calls or it's, it's sometimes the things that you're working on. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, it finishes a little late, and then the struggle becomes that you have to again get up in the morning, morning and, and then yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so when I was not so stressed uh, with the startup, I used to doze off at ten thirty because okay. the stress of the morning run mm. would <clears throat> make you would go make back me and go sleep. back yeah, and recover. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, but the good part through all of this has been that because of the exercise, despite the stress, I've been sleeping well. So okay. I've been able to get seven and a half hours of sleep. And wow. A lot okay. of people say that uh, a lot of people get unwell because of stress. Uh, yeah. And I'm told that it's not stress, it is lack of speed. Mm. The sleep, sorry. Mm. So if you're sleeping well, then it's one major tick box in terms sure. of uh, being healthy. Sure. So because of the stress on the soreness of the mm. exercise mm. and a hard day, mm. uh, I think uh, I've been sleeping yeah. well, but yeah. yeah, it sometimes stretches to 11.30. So this morning time which you have blocked out mm. for your fitness, is it something like a non-negotiable thing that come what may, you would have to get in then or you're like flexible key because it might happen, life happens. I mean, you might have a, uh, a you know, last moment call, meetings, or you're very particular that I won't get anything distracted during that time. How does it work? So I have kept uh, a minimum of uh, three runs in a month. So okay. Uh, three, three runs week. in a week, mm-hmm. sorry. Uh, three runs in a week. Uh, ideally, it should be four. Mm. Uh, so if there is a long uh, day and uh, late evening, sometimes I can move the, the Tuesday run to a Wednesday. Okay. Sometimes it gets piled up towards the end while it's not ad- advisable to run back uh, to back back to mm. back. Mm. Well, I know mm. you run every day, but yeah. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> yeah. But I've tried not to do uh, more than two runs consecutively. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, by Wednesday, you know, I know that I have to do my first run right. at least on th- Thursday. Right. Then Friday break and Saturday, Sunday I can make right. up. Right. And uh, Sundays are usually free. So Sunday right. is where my morning is blocked. My family knows that yeah. even if you have to go out for lunch, it has to be planned early because yeah. I would be going for that long right. run for two, three yeah. hours. So, yeah. uh, so that way, yes, the morning is non-negotiable. But the only thing that fights it is sleep. So if yeah. I am sleeping late, hmm. then you end up getting up late. And then if you have to reach office at... Yeah. 10 then yeah. you don't have enough time to complete the routine so yeah. so that way but uh, broadly yes i have been able to maintain that yeah. in spite of uh, covid or in fact when covid started and people were really paranoid i would get up at 4 30 before it because, was daylight okay and before people could see me because you can't run with the mask okay so pe- before people anybody could step out i would finish my run, finish your run? Okay, right? okay and and i remember one day i was slightly late and as i was finishing my run the sun came out and somebody was on the top of their uh, on the balcony and said they panicked they panicked <laughs> why somebody outside etc so then i pushed my routine even okay. further back to really start at 4 4 15 but yeah. i have not compromised on this uh, there is too much of planning i mean i think about it um, is it because that's the kind of a life and routine you have lived all your life that you you've had a very accomplished uh, corporate career uh, you've been part of probably India's biggest uh, startup success uh, and you are at a, a very high level uh, in making that brand a successful company. Uh, so does it come naturally to you that that sort of planning which you have gone through as a rigor in your corporate professional life and therefore you've been able to implement that and manage, I don't know if work-life balance is a thing, but is that the reason or uh, is it like, you know, or is it natural? Like, I mean, uh, because there's too much of planning, right? I mean, like you said, you know the fact that if you have a tight and a busy day on Tuesday and you cannot run the next day, you have the flexibility to move. A lot of people don't have the judgment to say that you should not run. And uh, start of the week, you know which other days you can block yourself, which other days you are open. Uh, so how is it like? I mean, is it because you've had a very uh, systematic approach to your professional life or or you have been wired that way yeah it's, it's it goes back you know i'm wired that way in the in the sense that uh, you know whatever i do there has to be an impact out of it right mm. so uh, creating an impact also means that you have to define metrics which tell you that whether it's working or not uh, a lot of people run for fun mm. and a lot of people tell me as well that you know forget about all these timings forget about all these kilometers yeah you know, make a group. I don't run in a group. I run solo. So because that's what drives me. It's it's the kind of person I am. So uh, identifying things that will improve. Again, I, I don't expect miracles in the short term. Uh, I look at things from the long term. But then 
over a long period of term, uh, long uh, time period, you should be improving. You should have that one percent improvement every day, mm. uh, and that's what is the biggest driver. So, mm. as I just mentioned, that when I started running, while in sport, you know, you can measure that. You know, this is the person you were losing to that person, let's say mm. six zero, and mm. now you're improving to six one or mm. six two. Uh, so you know that there is progress. Mm. Uh, when I took up running, the first thing was distance, mm. right? And then I will run so many kilometers. Let me see if my legs have it, right? Mm. So the the whole thing was getting better at it. So if I am not getting better at something over time, it does not drive me, right? Okay. Uh, so, so there is some. Uh, so there is a goal. Yeah, true not metric you have. Yeah, there is a metric mm. I have. Obviously, you are also running against. Uh, you know, there is a headwind of age. So okay. therefore, you know that. At 55, you can't aspire to be running much faster than what you are running today. Mm. But then you know that if you can even maintain your peak mm. over a long period of time, then mm. you are getting better. better right? yeah. So, so that way, uh, you know, a key motivation for me is to really measure that whether I am getting better at it, mm. and the fact that I have not st- even during my peak uh, stress period in work, etc., I did not let go because I realized that. Sometimes it's not about what you will gain, hmm. but what you will lose by not doing it, right? Yeah. So, for example, somebody gave me this example that uh, when you quit smoking, hmm. uh, you know, after a few years or months, it's not about the fact that can you have one cigarette, hmm. but it's about the fact that you are you now have a streak, right? A hmm. streak of four hundred days not, not s- doing smoke. It. So yeah. you want to continue that streak, yeah, and that drives it. you not to yeah. smoke. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same thing with exercise that yeah, yeah, yeah. if you started a streak of running and you yeah. wanted to build on it and the worry is that if you break that streak and take yeah. six months off or three months off, yeah. you are going back a long way and you have to start yeah. all over again. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, these are things which I have built up myself in my mind and okay. therefore it gives me structure, it gives me a plan and, mm. uh, and when I'm not doing well, I know I'm not doing well and, and, and therefore you then have a backup plan that at this date I will start to fix this. Okay. So, so that's that's how that's pretty much how is, that's pretty much how a startup is, right? I mean, right, you yeah. have to have a goal of growth, and if things are not going the way you want, you probably take a pause and figure out how yes. to fix it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, so we spoke about physical stress, and I think a very important topic, uh, uh, which a lot of people don't talk about, is also mental stress. Uh, the fact that um, uh, you're doing something which is I'd probably say unique in the sense that going through a mental rigor and f- physical rigor that is running a startup uh, and physical. Um, what's your take on mental fitness? Like what, you know, have you, uh, I'm sure, I mean, asking that, have you felt stress is a misnomer, but uh, how do you kind of balance it out? I mean, there, are there stuff which has worked in your favor to say that, you know, I know this is not going my way, so let me take a pause and be reasonable in my goal. How do you kind of uh, uh, structure the mental fitness part? Yeah. So I think a lot of disappointment happens when you have expectations and uh, you build up those expectations either within yourself mm. or with people around you. Mm. And therefore, uh, if you fail to meet those expectations, you are very disappointed or you feel that others would see you in a very different light uh, and that's where a lot of pressure comes on you. So, um, so one thing I did when I started off was that be very clear in my head that this could go either way and you know every day as we do the startup uh, and, and you have seen that how market conditions change and last year was very hot in terms of a lot of investment flowing in this year like people say it's a long winter of funding. So things change very fast. So in my mind, when I started off, I said, you know, I'm doing it for the next 20 years. I'm not going to go back and take up a job. So Mm. this is something I'm going to do uh, for 20 years. uh, And therefore, I need to plan in such a way that every day when I started, I said, okay, this could be very small and I'm okay keeping it small as long as I'm doing what I love Mm. or it could become very big. If I'm ready to get the right partners to invest in my company, I should be ready with the big plan. So every day... You look at both sides and say, okay, there's one where you could just be where you are or maybe go slightly down from where you have reached. Mm. And on the other side, you know, uh, suddenly you might attract huge investments Mm. or huge opportunities or something might really work out well. So you should be ready with both plans. So Mm. that way, 
being a startup and uh, not taking anything for granted is number one. And number two is having that range of expectations or scenarios built up in your mind. Like I'm sure you do in a long race yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you know, you think of all the plans uh, and, yeah. and like Mike Tyson said, right, you have all the strategies to get the punch, first in, the face. punch yeah. in the face. Yeah. So, yeah, you might think that, okay, I'll run this race, I will run a negative split yeah. and suddenly you get cramps where yeah, you never had it yeah. or suddenly the weather turns very mm. sunny. So, all of those scenarios you have to build up your mind, uh, mm. build up in your mind and therefore be ready for it, uh, which then doesn't give you stress. But... Mm. If you believe if things are going well, things will go on well forever or if things are bad and they will be bad forever, then you you behave very differently and that mm. could lead to a lot of stress, right? Or yeah. people might exit, give up and, yeah. and it applies equally for sport and business yeah. that uh, even sport is, is a long-term yeah. long term commitment, right? Yeah. You, you can't, you can be lucky. I was lucky that I ran the first race at 156. But now even to maintain that, you have to maintain a level of fitness, a yeah. routine, you have to take care of your body, injury, uh, yeah. time, what yeah. you're eating. So, so yeah, you have to plan for a long term. Yeah. Right? So I won't say lucky because people who do a lot of hard work, uh, I mean, uh, luck doesn't come that way. So certainly there's a hard work which is gone even to crack that 156. Um, so uh, when I was trying to know more about you and when we met and you we were te telling me about your background something which uh, really uh, stood for me is that you are some you are a guy who have started a lot many things late uh, so you have defied that fact uh, that you know uh, age is just a number you could start at any age like so I was kind of when you were telling me uh, and I was trying to go through the numbers and I'm sure if I got the numbers right so I, I think what you probably would be 35 36 when you started playing squash uh, you were probably what uh, 40 times when you started playing tennis first then around 44 you started um, uh, doing running so that's an age where people are not trying to do anything in physical right I mean they, all they are is cow PO and enjoy right and you started your startup career also in your mid 40s uh, late, right? 40s. late 40s right so uh, so you started a lot of things both in sports fitness and professionally much later and you know you've kind of um, defied that fact and you've come out uh, very strong so so i want to kind of reflect back particularly in the sports part right uh, what made you first let's go back to the squash what made you choose squash as a sport when you were 34 36 uh, and what made you choose this different sport like what made you say that okay now squash is done now let me go and choose tennis and now tennis is done let me now go and do running so i mean what was that choice about yeah so uh, okay it's also le it's also connected to uh, lifestyle and access right so till till i was 34 35 i used to live in an area where the apartment complex the only thing they had was a swimming pool which was closed half the year right mm -hmm. so uh, so at that age i could afford to move into an apartment complex which had facilities right so the first day i moved in and and the excuse for moving there was that our son was getting older okay. uh, or he was just about f four years old. So, uh, <clears throat> so therefore, good time to get him to uh, take up these sports and we should move into a complex where these facilities were available. Mm -hmm. uh, but the joke in the complex was that my, my wife used to send my kids to get me back saying, <laughs> Papa, bought Khelia, come back. Right? <laughs> Papa is getting more benefit of the sport <laughs> complex sport. than son. Yeah. So when I first moved in there, uh, the first day, I had rackets for all of these, I bought rackets. So I first went to the baddie court and I realized that there was a group of people who were playing regularly and I was not good enough. Right. Uh, I went to the tennis court next. So they they were kind enough to let me play a game, but then I realized that I was not up to their level and I was bringing the, uh, the game down for them. And so it happened uh, in squash. Uh, so I thought that let me take one sport and at least be as good as what the others are so that mm -hmm. I can play with the people who are there. Otherwise, uh, neither would they enjoy, neither would I enjoy. Okay. And, uh, I and you had no background of playing squash or anything in the I past. had played probably 5-10 games. Uh, okay. Tennis I had played in school okay. uh, for a year, two years. Okay. But I used to play squash like I play tennis, okay. right? You know, mm. high, uh, yeah, hard, high smash, hard yeah. smashing yeah. serve yeah. and all of yeah. that, right? Yeah. But yeah, beyond that, nothing. So okay. I said, okay, let me go down to zero. Mm. So I was lucky that uh, I googled and... This lady who was earlier the national champion mm. and uh, she just had uh, she had just had a baby and she was looking to coach 
and she was kind enough to agree to coach me, uh, Mekla. And so I said, okay, let me learn from the best. So every morning she used to, uh, she used to come to our complex and then we would play for an hour. And then I would, any free time I would get, I would go to the court and I'll keep hitting the back ends, keep hitting, keep doing the drills, which are so important in squash. And the whole motive was to keep getting better at squash. Hmm. There was a Bangalore ladder. I started playing in that. At some point, I was 26, 27 on that in ladder. Bangalore circuit? Yeah, Bangalore wow. circuit. Okay. And uh, there was also this ladder used to have, they used to divide the first 64 people into eight groups. Okay. And then you would have those tournaments, etc. Hmm. So I had played those. Hmm. Uh, but over time, what happened was that I was as good or better than most people in the complex. And there were just a group of two, hmm. three people because... Hmm. Not many people play squash well, right? Okay. A lot of people play it, uh, but, you know, getting the technique right. So, yeah. and I started getting bored because I was not improving because there was nobody to play with. And okay. this ladder thing where you play different people was mm. is slightly erratic because you have to find somebody to play and then mm. fix up a time. So mm. once in three weeks, you get to play with somebody if he okay. agrees. So then I said, okay, I'm not getting much better at it. Okay. Uh, it's stagnating. Uh, so let me... Move on. Move on and play tennis. tennis. Right? Because there was a larger group of tennis players there. So so you were getting better. Uh, you had to move on to another sport because you didn't find that much good competition to play around. Yeah, I was okay. not getting the kick of... Wow, but you were getting better. I was getting slightly better, but I was okay. playing the same guy. Sure, so I couldn't sure. even measure whether I was getting better. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so so I said, okay, let me uh, move on to a new sport. Okay. Uh, so, so there was a larger group of tennis uh, players and I said, okay, let me give more variety. Okay. But I did it for four years, right? Okay. So Played squash, played squash for four years. For four okay. years mm. And uh, so I would still play squash, but I took up tennis. Mm. And there was this uh, amazing coach in our complex mm. who had played ITF. Okay. And uh, he had also done chair, uh, sorry, linesman at Wimbledon. So okay. oh. he used to beat me 6-0 for every morning, but ah. still I would land up every... Okay. So even, in, even this lady used to beat me like... 11-0, yeah. uh, yeah. even when I thought I was good. Yeah. Uh, and, and I used to say, it's like the Chinese proverb, right? That you eat a frog and your day can only get better. Yeah. And you tell yeah. people that yeah. every morning you go, yeah. you could get beaten. Yeah. And then, so I moved on to another sport. So tennis, I used to, it used to be dark in the morning and that's the time it was available. Mm. So under floodlights, uh, I think 5.30 to 6.30, mm. uh, thrice or four times in a week, I would mm. play with the coach for mm. an hour singles, okay. then play doubles with the team. Mm. And it was a good group and uh, <clears throat> and I enjoyed that sport. Mm. Uh, and then I moved away from that complex into uh, the place I live currently. Mm. Uh, and here, uh, while there are more tennis courts, there are two tennis courts, but it's a new group and there were a lot of uh, the t tennis courts were busy, etc. I was not able to build up my new group. Mm. Uh, so I took up running. running. Right. And, and I told you about that yeah. whole marathon thing. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. the Masuri trip and how it yeah. started. So right. that, that was the same time. Right, right. Uh, so all this process, moving from squash to tennis to running, mm, what was the primary uh, goal in your mind? That is it to get better in that sport or just kind of learn and stay fit? Like is sport just a means to stay fit or, you know, just to kind of push your, uh, you know, limit to understand how far can you go in terms of your uh, performance? Yeah. So for me, sport is a form of meditation, right? A lot mm. of uh, uh, my parents, for example, are very, very uh, um, religious mm. and they have pushed me into meditation but I am mm. totally opposite I tell okay. them I am an atheist <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, but for your me your kids know that huh? your kids also know that my kids also know okay. that and they are also very rational <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, for me sports has been like a meditation right? Okay. and I relate a lot between my improvement in sport and my mm. improvement in business right? Mm. so for example like I was telling you during the run is that uh, my main way of playing squash or tennis is that put one more b ball back, right? Mm. And and therefore, I just do whatever it takes to keep... Like in tennis, I was called the CRO, Chief Returning Officer, because okay. the other side would believe that they back. have hit a winner, but I would just reach out and then push it back, push it right? Back. And some way, my career has also been like that, that, mm. you know, while I have changed my mm. roles every mm. six, seven years, but mm. in those six years... Whatever it takes to mm. make the business mm. keep moving forward, look at mm. every little opportunity because mm. like you would have read it many where 1.01 mm. 01 into the power 365 yeah. is some magical number. So keep doing a bit better, etc. And therefore, when you play sport, you realize that while that might be a strength, mm. the other side, you would also want to have 
that winner shot where you could hit a winner rather than just yeah. trying to put the ball back mm. and therefore you question that when you are in in office situation mm. are you just letting the situation linger or taking bold decisions where you can step up and mm. therefore uh, how do you behave in those situations mm. so for me whether it's running or sports it gives me a lot of time to think about how improvements can happen and a lot of things i can relate between sport as well as how mm. i behave uh, at work or in personal life and and therefore while fitness is a large part of it uh, mm. like i i said i've been diabetic for many mm. years mm. and therefore i need to do some activity Actually, so that yeah. i don't become dependent on insulin mm. or things like that but the the larger benefit is that it's not just to get those many calories out or so those, those many miles in it's also to see how you can keep improving, improving. Mm. and and how do you use that running gives me much more time to think right yeah. while sport you are there are multiple variables in running when you're doing your long runs uh, your mind is free yeah uh, your body is going through those motions over a period of 2 hours 3 yeah. hours and therefore mm. it gives me a lot of time to have mm. clear thought process there mm. are no phone with you yeah uh, you're not distracted by another meditative else. it's, it's uh, very meditative yeah. and i've found yeah. many answers while i've been Yeah. either in the shower or while i've been running yeah oh, wow <laughs> so most of your big ideas come either when you are on the run or you are in the shower yeah the third place is in the aircraft <laughs> yeah. so Because when i'm flying and yeah. my phone is not working i yeah. don't download movies yeah i always have my diary and my pen handy and awesome. i just write a lot of notes yeah. about yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny that um, uh, you know. I don't know if you still know. Um, I found a Quora uh, post where someone had asked uh, how long it takes to uh, you know learn squash, and you went and answered that, <laughs> saying that I started playing squash at the age of thirty-five. Uh, I I hired a coach. You kind of distilled your process, and I was like, wow, this guy knows. what it takes to kind of ace something and uh, he's so serious that he went to kora and telling someone else that this is how you could also do right so essentially you're open sourcing uh, what worked for you right um, something common which i uh, i kind of sense across all your pattern is um, getting coached uh, and uh, we were talking about it when we were running uh, and uh, i don't know if you know this is very famous um, uh, surgeon in the us called atul gawande Uh, and he has this fabulous uh, ted talk about the importance of coaching like i mean he goes down i would recommend anyone listening and watching to kind of give it a uh, watch uh, you know he he goes out say that how he got um, his professor in the uh, operation theater to kind of observe how he does uh, the surgery uh, so that he can go back um, and improve it so essentially uh, emphasizing on the fact how coaching is important right or how getting a coach is important uh and there's this famous line which he said that uh, you know um uh, you know you don't know what it takes to be great till the time you hire a coach essentially right so in your process of getting that coach uh, do you think that uh, that investment or the decision that finding a coach uh, is important and have you seen any parallels in your work uh, stemming out from that sport because you've can always hired a coach uh, right and in today's world you have access to everything on internet right so you can go and learn on youtube or anywhere how to pick anything and you can learn that so importance of coaching uh, importance of coach and how do you make your decision of choosing that coach like what goes in your mind that what makes me decide this is the guy i should hire as a coach <clears throat> uh so a lot of us always live in denial right because we have made this image that we know it all mm. and being vulnerable will show that you know maybe we are faking it or we were not right there but it's very important uh, in the process of getting better at anything to realize that on certain things you could be better or you could do better right uh, so when we talked about sport a lot it sports is still easier because it's okay to go and tell somebody Oh I just want I have never played golf I want to play golf so can you be my coach right mm -hmm. but what about an area which you have been doing right and you suddenly say I need coach I need coaching in this thing where everybody feels that oh you are supposed to be good at it why do you need yeah. a coach right yeah yeah so, you should have cracked this yeah. yeah you should you should know better right yeah. so uh, when I started my startup which was the major move from what I had done in the past right so so one big thing was that take assignments where 
there are certain things where there is a common thread and there are certain things you know nothing about mm. nothing at all right mm. now i am i am known as a person who is well versed with fashion right mm. uh but not many people know or realize that i have no fashion background right mm. so i am an electronics engineer i did my mba i could have been in mutual funds mm. uh, or i could have been in telecom or i could have been in fashion and these were three options available when i was when i joined the aditya billa group but as i took up new assignments uh, so i ensured that i kept one thing continuous which was my that i was building depth in fashion and therefore i did not leave that industry because i believed the more i went deeper i would become more an expert in this area mm. however you had to change your line so that you were getting a new flavor mm. and every time i changed the line there was there were many things that i had to learn mm. and lot of things i was not sure about mm. and there were high chances of failure mm. and that's how i believe i were able to push myself mm. into believing i could do more mm. right so let me talk about two of those one was when i was well entrenched in the fashion industry having mm. worked in madura garment then in arvin then ceo of calvin klein and i said i know this right it's it's something which you know most of the answers i know mm. how do i push myself to do something which is very different and online was opening up mm. uh, and that when i joined flipkart mm. now flipkart was full of very very bright guys who were looking at every industry every problem for a very first principles mm. and people who came with lot of experience were not very successful in flipkart right sure. because they were disrupting yeah. and you didn't want people to come in and say oh this is done in this way so build it this way right because the experience becomes a liability for them yes yeah. right mm. and for me therefore the important thing was not to come up front and tell them all i knew about fashion yeah. but first to understand what these kids were doing right mm. and i had this amazing bunch of young people uh, who were like you know talking very very different language mm. very data oriented very tech driven uh, product thinking mm. and therefore to have the humility to work with them was what got me forward first mm. let me understand what these guys are doing mm. and then let me start building it with the experience that i have had mm. and therefore those 6 years in flipkart were mm. amazing because first i had to unlearn a lot of things i had to mm. learn a lot of things and then i had to start building the layer of my knowledge of the fashion industry to say okay you need to build brands but how do you build brands for an online kind of environment mm. you you have looked at brands from a premium lens but here mm. you are looking at a consumer base digital first which approach is tier, yeah. digital first tier 2 tier 3 town for whom 300 500 rupee matters a lot mm. how do you build for them mm. so therefore it was a huge learning exercise where some of your colleagues become your coach right? okay okay and then when i did my startup and these are young guys as i young guys okay. young guys just out of college mm. but they know a lot of things which you mm. don't know right mm. so and then the third time was the the when i started my startup mm. now i read somewhere where you know i think naval said that a lot of people are not able to do 0 to 1 uh, big corporations or senior executives are not able to do 0 to 1 because they never go to zero mm. right mm. they say i am going to zero but mm. then they start with somewhere in between because they say these things i know mm. uh, when i started up i had no clue on fundraising right okay. how do you fundraise how mm. do you reach out how mm. do you create a deck mm. right so and then you start finding people who you are comfortable with mm. you can ask for help you can tell them that you know i know nothing about this area mm. and so therefore uh, one of my a uh, person who stays in in our neighborhood mm. and a good friend so i reached out to him saying mm. i have no clue about fundraising mm. i don't know what kind of decks yeah. to be made what mm. how do you pitch an idea do yeah. you just go and talk about everything mm. or do you present in a certain way and then he coached me mm. right so we used to take these long walks talk about the idea see how it could be productized whether being 300 million in 3 years was good enough or being mm. Uh, 100 million in 3 years was good mm. enough were you sounding too practical or too ambitious mm. those are a lot of things that you had to really uh, get to and then i actually went through live presentation sessions with some vcs who were not looking at this sector mm. just to ensure that i get feedback mm. on mm. how was my presentation coming across whether it mm. was covering all the things and while a lot of people might think that rishi just walked out of flipkart and mm. there were people waiting to write a check mm. and therefore it, it was a cake walk <laughs> yeah. it's not that anybody yeah. writing a check you know would yeah. would want to do his due diligence yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so yeah so that was actual coaching and yeah. then 
the kind of people we have had in the team a lot mm. of youngsters and mm. while they are learning things from me i am learning things from them and mm. therefore that's how mm. uh, i am getting coached all the time so did this uh, because you started playing squash tennis running and then you did the startup um, uh, i don't know i mean is it because at that time also you were vulnerable to say that look i don't know the sport so i will rather go and find a coach and learn and then get it better and therefore you know that kind of establish this truth that okay if you need to get better you need to get coached right uh, or you were always in this mindset back from the young days that uh, no you know uh, this is how it is if you want to learn something you want to find a coach so that success like you reached us at a point in squash and tennis that you were really good amongst your competition right so did that establish this fact that you know, coaching is important uh, you know or it was the other way around that you always believed in coaching no i have i wouldn't say that i have always believed in coaching mm. and i have had mentors and because in regular when you are doing things and things are moving you are mm. consciously looking at a lot of data mm. and therefore to have somebody as a sounding board etc uh is something that i have not used actively okay but whenever i have looked at having a step change mm. then i have said that okay this is something which i have not done before mm. right there is one that i can read up a little bit mm. and and believe that i have enough knowledge mm. or let me go to zero and mm. then say okay if we were to get the best guys to help me do it sure how would i do it yeah. right and so therefore whenever there has been a step jump mm. that's where i have really looked at a coach coming in and helping yeah. me structure it and build it in the right way yeah. because then once the foundation is set mm. then you are looking at the right data you are looking right. at the right information and the coach may or may not have like especially in business mm. like uh, people do not like most coaches are not exactly from your area right yeah. so uh, if you are coaching me in running mm. you are actively running and therefore you yeah. can look at data every day and tell me yeah. but in business you do not get yeah. so yeah. either you have uh, great leaders who are coaches yeah. so uh, so therefore they would tell you what to do in certain context but yeah. then they do not have as much context as a running coach or a cricket yeah. coach or a sports coach True. might have right so it's slightly different yeah uh, and therefore you could talk about general themes but you cannot really go and discuss every day with them saying right. oh today i face this problem or yeah. this metric is going up going down what should i do so therefore yeah, it's right. slightly different and right uh, and it's so true that i mean it just it just uh, you know reminds me that until this recent times um, Uh, the most sought after coach he is no more he i think he passed away just couple of years back in silicon valley uh, who used to be a coach to every executive in silicon valley from uh, you know the top guys in google the ceo to google to twitter to everyone uh, he was not from the business background he was a i think baseball or football coach in high school forgetting his name bob or something and uh, there's a book written uh, uh, a name i'll basic i'll link uh, in the show notes uh and that basically tells the same fact i mean you're not coming from that field of business but you are coaching business executives uh, right and that mindset of how he uh, how that gentleman coached uh the team in the sport uh, kind of transferred him like what it takes to kind of create high performing individuals yeah, yeah. yeah. uh so you're a data driven guy it's it's fairly uh, uh, you know kind of established now right so uh do you use any technology intervention essentially to kind of track uh, your own health your own fitness i mean any parameters you are looking at to say that am i staying healthy uh, any wearables what what's your kind of tech stack looking in terms of your fitness yeah so yeah i have a garmin watch mm. and i am on strava and mm. i have uh, <clears throat> bought a heart rate monitor recently okay. so that i get better heart rate data okay so yeah some of the things that i actively look at uh, what is my vo2 mm. max score mm. Mm. which had gone up to 55 mm. uh, now it's down to 48 because wow uh, so yeah it's come back to 49 50 but wow. yeah so this is a vo2 max number yeah wow uh, so okay. i would like that to be around 53 55 mm. uh, so it also says that you have the heart of a 15 year old uh, 20 year old 20 year old yeah, mm. yeah mm. top 15% of your age and 20 year old so mm. so that's one metric i look at i look at my resting heart rate mm. which is currently at 54 55 but mm. uh, a year year and a half back at my peak it was at 48 wow. uh, 48 49 mm. so i'm mm. trying to get that down mm. um, so these are two main things and then apart from that obviously i'm also trying to uh, bring down my heart rate while running slow mm. i have been not running as slow as i should mm. be so my easy runs my heart rate should be below 40 but they mm. 
go up to 150 so mm. that is something i need to bring it down mm. Mm. Uh, and then my race timings are the other ones which okay. i would uh, yeah. like to it's so fairly improve. a very uh, uh, driven approach to understand again to the same point that uh, are you inching closer to that improvement and how data helps you like you said i mean if your heart rate is an indication that uh, it's not up there so you probably will have to slow down and only slowing down will eventually help you run yeah. faster later yeah. on right yeah. um, so in between, let's say squash, tennis and running, if you have to pick one sport and say you want to, let's say that sport you want to challenge someone out, like uh, let's say a startup founder, right? You want to challenge that, you know, that founder, male, female to say that I can challenge you in that sport, which sport that would be? <laughs> running. Yeah. Running? Okay. Let's make it even more fun. Uh, who is that founder? <laughs> Any founder you want to say that come and I want to challenge you for, I don't know, a 10K or a 5K. Who would you want to challenge? Yeah, any founder below 35. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you pick your competition even tough, right? You want to call out a name? Like yeah, you I, used to, I used to tell my son that, you know, I got him into running. I said, if you beat me before uh, on a, over a 10K, uh, before I turn 50, then, wow. you know, that would be an achievement, right? So, so, you, so you have a founder in your mind, you want to kind of challenge to say that, uh, you know, come, I, I want to challenge you for a 10K. <laughs> You have any name? Uh, no, nothing. Like no one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, who do you think is the fittest uh, founder in your network? Again, male, female, anyone. Uh, in your network, you see that person is fit. So yeah, most people I know are not in the founder community, but in the Ajay. business community because mm -hmm. uh, this founder thing has just been a. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Sujit is quite fit. To Udan Sujit founder. is from Udan. Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay. So I remember when. I was at my peak in squash and he was starting off in squash, squash so I used okay. to beat him very easily. Okay. Then when I moved to APR, I had given up squash for mm -hmm. this, so mm -hmm. we were like, but he's got better, better. and healthier okay. and he's quite okay. fit and yeah. he plays squash quite well now and he beats nice. me easily now. But right. yeah, in, in so a, either Sujit has to take up running now or you'll have to go back <laughs> to squash oh, right now to compete with him. Improve my yeah. squash skills. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, some people like Rajiv Mehta is quite fit. Rajiv is very, very fit, yeah, he's heavy into running. Uh, then Vishak is the uh, CEO of MD of Madura Garments. Okay. So he's very good in squash, tennis, and nice. in badminton. Yeah. Nice, Once nice. I invited him to play and uh, squash, and like uh, after a few games, he said, "Let me coach you a bit." He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, over a run, I probably get, I'll beat him. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. But in squash and tennis, he can beat me hollow. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, but most awesome. people, once they, most of my colleagues, I've seen that once they cross. Uh, you know, the 25, 30 mark, then mm. they might have been talented in sport when mm. they were younger, mm. but then if they don't keep up, they yeah. over time lose that edge in yeah. terms of being. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about an interesting topic, food. Now, what's your relationship with food? Um, are you, are you like, uh, I don't know, I've never understood what foodie means, uh, but I, I, are you like, uh, you know, you had some issues with food, uh, food adds onto your weight, are you looking food as more as now that you're into running, which is an extremely aerobic and endurance uh, sport, uh, you look at food, food as more as a tool to help you get better. So what's your relationship with food? Yeah, so two, two very big extremes, right? Mm. On one side, I eat everything mm. in the sense that whatever is cooked, I'll just eat it. I've spent, mm. like I, I joined a hostel when I was... A boarding school when I was 10 years old and mm. since then I was I have been out of home so mm. in boarding schools you don't have choice right mm. whatever is kept in front of you you eat it mm. so I have never ever complained about what's mm. been cooked so it's mm. like x y or z I'll just eat it okay. uh, and even if somebody in the house you know comments that this is tasty or not yeah. tasty I don't even realize so I your wife should be very happy you're yeah, not a very <laughs> picky guy <laughs> yeah, I'm not at all a picky guy mm. whatever is cooked I'll just eat it, eat right? it. okay uh, that's one part of me. Mm. The other part of me is that if we are eating out, mm. right, or if we are traveling, mm. I would like eating to be uh, an experience. Okay. So I would research and mm. look for the most authentic restaurants. Mm. And, and for me, eating well is not eating in a five star because mm. my image of five star is all these business meetings or conferences, mm. you go and eat and that food. you hardly food. get to eat. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I don't enjoy that yeah. food, but yeah. I would look for these dhabas mm. or these places which locals know mm. and so wherever whether mm. i'm traveling to 
Odisha or whether mm. I am trying to travel to Kerala or in Delhi, mm. I would try to find those places mm. and eat the authentic stuff, right? Mm. So, uh, and it's always non-witch. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love non-witch. So, uh, so basically those are experiences yeah. that I would never give up on. So, okay. I become a foodie when I'm traveling, mm. but in a regular day, I just mm. eat what the, whatever is put in front of me. Yeah. Uh, now coming to the discipline of this yes mm. I was eating whatever uh, and not so so when I started running and I took up a coach uh, the first thing he said was you have to lose four kilos mm. so I went on the healthy fire app I put mm. two machines uh, uh, weighing machines on one on my dining table one next to my bed and okay. anything I would eat I would measure and eat wow. and mm. I realized that was my big aha moment that mm. If you measure and eat, you yeah, know, essentially you're, uh, ca- you're calorie, cal- balancing, cal- calorie balancing. And I realized yeah. that, Macros. you know, every uh, 7,000 calories mm. that I had deficiency of, I will lose a kilo. Mm. And it was like, like perfect data. Mm. So every day I was, uh, my metabolism plus my exercises, mm. I was like 27 and 2800 and I was eating 2000 mm. and I was losing 700 deficit of calories. So mm. every 10 days I was losing a kilo. So the, wasn't that intimidating that you got to calculate everything what comes your way and then no. say that, you know, do So I was eating whatever I was eating. The okay. only difference was I was watching. Okay. Mm. And I realized that you know, if you take that extra serving of dal mm. or that extra serving of vegetable, mm. you add those two, three hundred calories which you did not need, right? Mm. Or if you had that half chapati extra, mm. it would just spoil the chart. Mm. So if you took what you need mm. in one go mm. and just finish that, mm. uh, you were perfectly okay. I like right? the fact that it's like someone watching on you get the scale on your dining table itself. So everything you, every time you go for the second serving, you know, scale <laughs> your weight and say, no, yeah. alarmingly, it's going to be exceeding yeah. more than what yeah, you want. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and the good part was once you lost that weight, mm. then you could go back to 2700 because mm. you were burning that much, mm. Mm. which means that now you had 30% of 35% more to eat in mm. terms of servings. If you were mm. eating the same food, mm. second was replacement, right? Okay. That. If you went to a restaurant and you had a choice of eating mm. idli or dosa, mm. and your mind you would say that, okay, yeah, a dosa is so much and mm. an idli is so much, mm. so you would probably have mm. half a dosa and have two idlis rather mm. than mm. one idli and a mm. full dosa. Mm. So I think those little cuts okay. here and there yeah. really helped me cut yeah. down my weight. And yeah. uh, and a lot of people talk about injury to knee, etc. But mm. I think it's linked to your weight. Yeah. So if you are carrying 2-3 kilos extra over mm. 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers, mm-hmm. you are putting that much more pressure on your knee. Yeah. It's not linked to the road mm. or you, it's not linked to the kilometers yeah. you run, yeah. Yeah. but your weight itself, right? So, uh, so I realized that being conscious of what you eat, uh, eating more often uh, and then eating a couple of hours, three hours before you sleep mm. are little adjustments which are not, it's just being conscious about it, right? Mm. Otherwise, if you're not conscious about eating, you make these mistakes, but then the difference between eating one hour early versus one hour late. Mm. Now, if I reach home at 8.30, one is I can relax and eat after an hour, or I can eat the moment I reach home and mm. then relax. Okay. Makes a huge difference because mm. then that much time you get to digest before you sleep. Yeah. So these are small adjustments that I started to notice when it was linked to my sport. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and those are things which also make So these are ancillary fun. aspects because now you are... You picked up a sport uh, which is helping you in your fitness but also uh, making you push your limit for performance and then you realize this ancillary aspect also is complementing it. So you can't <clears throat> get this wrong. Like uh, it's, it's weird but I have seen people around my apartment complex that they will go out for a run and then come back, go to a bakery, get an egg puff and get a Pepsi. Uh, and I just couldn't understand why they would do that because you just went out for a run and now you're coming back and getting those extra carbs and Pepsi, I mean, which is, doesn't make sense. So they're thinking, I earned something, so therefore I deserve to eat this. Uh, it's the other way around. Because you did something good, now you need to eat something to replenish it so that you can go back, recover and come back uh, better the next day. right? So um, And that, uh, I believe, came to you only because you were in that path of uh, you know, fitness and sport, and then you realize food, therefore, is going to complement it. Uh, yeah, it, it becomes a whole ecosystem, right? It's yeah. like business, right? Yeah. If you're doing one thing, mm. like if you're working in a big company, mm. then you have a role. Mm. Many things are getting done on their own, mm. and you never notice it, mm. right? Like fundraise. Mm. Your companies are, somebody's doing fundraise, money mm. is available, you mm. present a budget, money mm. appears, mm. and or money disappears, or whatever, but mm. you are told. Mm. 
when you're doing your startup, you realize those are things I have to take care take of, care. right? Yeah, yeah. And therefore, the things that are important start mm. to become very different. Mm. And mm. then you have to go down deep and study and solve that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how, uh, as you expand or go deeper into the thing that you're doing or the mm. sport you're doing mm. or the business you're doing, mm. and you start no- noticing the cause and effect, mm. then you start taking care of a lot more things mm. or putting them in order. Mm. Uh, otherwise you will keep blaming that oh I'm doing I'm trying a lot yeah. but things are not things moving are not forward doing, yeah. but it may not just be the miles that you're putting in it might be linked to yeah. many other things that yeah. uh, should have been done yeah. better yeah. so you, you've you been a fashion guy all your life right I mean uh, by fashion in this you just spent your uh, professional career in the fashion um, does your wife think that you're fashionable? <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife is definitely more fashionable than me <laughs> but, but does your wife think that you are fashionable she, <laughs> i should have asked her but do you think she thinks that you are fashionable uh so i definitely uh, she does definitely thinks i i know fashion well okay right uh, uh and i've always dressed up well it's okay. not that i've dressed up out of the world or very differently just yeah. to show i'm fashionable but yeah. i'm always dressed up well even yeah. if i'm going for a run or yeah. even if i'm wearing something for the uh for going to sleep I ensure that, you know, it's match coordinated, it's looking good and it's not like shabby or yeah, just pick yeah, up anything, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm not overboard in terms of being fashionable that way. Yeah. But yeah, I have my own style. and Yeah. Uh, so post this, we should ask her and get her to come on the camera to say yeah. whether you are, whether she thinks but you're fashionable or not. A lot of time when we are looking at fashion brands to acquire, <laughs> the first thing I do is I ask her that, oh, what do you think about this brand? Right. So most brands she is already aware of. Yeah. Otherwise, she'll check them out on yeah. Instagram and say, yeah. yeah, this is nice, this is yeah. not nice. and. Right. So, cool. So yeah. So we'll validate that. We'll validate. Uh, we'll ask her to say that. Do you think Rishi is fashionable? <laughs> and then kind of compare whether that's true or not. So um, and uh, so difficult to compete with a woman on that. Yeah. But, yeah. but for most men, wherever I've worked, yes, obviously. You're fashionable. And you spend most so of your career in menswear. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you spend most of your career in menswear. Yeah. But yeah, there's yeah. a lot of women at. Work yeah. For. Yeah. Yeah. So who do you think is the most fashionable uh, person? Let's say in the startup space. Uh, uh, since you've spent last few years in startups, who do you think is the most fashionable? Uh, Someone who comes to your mind anyway. Yeah, Mukesh Bansal comes. Yeah. Mukesh Bansal. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mukesh Bansal yeah, yeah. is. Uh, yeah, I think about it. I also me. think, yeah, because he always come, you know, decked up and full crisp. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he doesn't go overboard, but he has his. Yeah. He has this whole style. He's very lean, and yeah. I think he's also gets up early morning to yeah. do his weights etc but yeah, he's, yeah. yeah he's quite yeah kind of okay stylish. cool let's dial into your cop, uh, your entrepreneurial journey uh, goat brands uh, right um, so goat everyone knows uh, you know uh, what it stands for i would love you to double click on it and did that name and brand come to you because of this background in sports and you've been playing a lot of that sports or what made you kind of say that okay this is what i want to go for like why that name goat Okay. So like every process, I, I sat down with my kids and I said, okay, let's look for a good name. Mm. So he said, uh, you know, you have a lot of brands on, on the name of fruits, or vegetables, mm-hmm. or, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, apple, orange, mango, apple, apple, everything mango. Is there. Yeah. and then you have animals. Yeah. Uh, so we said, okay, let's start that way. So we put down all the names of this. And then suddenly when we were putting down animals, uh, goat came across. Okay. Uh, and the first thing that struck me was greatest of all time because okay. it's a very common term used okay. in sport. You mm. constantly have debates about uh, Nadal versus Federer yeah. or Ronaldo versus Messi and yeah. therefore he said, okay, goat. And then we said, how does it connect with what we do? And we said, okay, we are trying to aggregate. We're trying to get good brands, good founders, good. So we're trying to get all the greats together mm. to build something which is the greatest of all time. So mm. again, another... A thing which matched the third was uh, goat as an animal is wise uh, we didn't want to take an old goat with with a goatee and mm. uh, so we we wanted a young goat and therefore mm. you would notice that mm. it's a young goat and that therefore became the brief that you know mm. a wise animal which can climb mountains mm. um, and uh, goat stands for the greatest of all time and also all the and the sporting connect so you would yeah. see in our office that we have yeah i could uh, see a lot of all uh, the icon, yeah, uh, icons yeah yeah and, and their quotations, like yeah. the one I like most is the one where Messi says yes, that, you know, uh, you know, it took me 17 years to become an overnight success. So, yeah. uh, so I also relate to that saying that 
yes. you know if if i am doing a startup it's mm. it, it took many many years of mm. learning many things to suddenly say oh you got lucky or you mm. are similarly in running that you yeah. have to do yeah and and i'm sure you've gone through many yeah. many hours of running and yeah. and then you hit your yeah uh, bq timing so yeah. So yeah, it's all about uh, getting the greatest people together to build something new and something which is better than what has been created before. Terrific. I mean, um, uh, because if it was just another business that we were creating, it would not be fun. Sure. So yeah. Be. I mean, that you almost gave a recipe of what it takes to be a goat in life. Like, I mean, just being there. I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I mean, I, I know I'll put you on a spot. Uh, but who is your goat in tennis? Um, Stefan Edberg. Oh wow! I don't know if your team members uh, would like you to say that. A lot of Federer and Nadal fans yeah, I know, I know. might come but, back. You know, it's really... like first love. So yeah, course, I grew up watching yeah, yeah. Becker and uh, Edberg, okay. and I always used to love Edberg's yeah. flair. Okay. So while he was, he he won many Wimbledon's yeah. and also won Australian. Yeah. yeah. But he had a style, you know. Of course. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tennis. I asked tennis because seven volleys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tennis was your sport uh, in running. Who is this goat? Kipchoge. Kipchoge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's 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 so weird that there's no comparison, yeah, right? I mean, he's, he's just, uh, just stands out. Uh, like in most of the other sport I've seen, uh, almost all the sport there is a comparison. You could, I mean, yeah. football, cricket. There's always in generations also you can compare, but in running, it's, it doesn't come out. Right? I mean, there's no one to compare uh, Kipchoge. Uh, brilliant. So in your team at Goat. Uh, I think most of the team members, if not uh, till now, at least if they are watching and listening, they probably know I've got a fit boss. Uh, you know, this guy runs most of the weekdays and over the weekends he's running. So is there this um, uh, culture in the team that look, uh, because my boss is fit, so I have to also do some activities. Uh, I also have to show up and I have to run, I don't know, any fitness. So do you have this culture that look, uh, you know, we got to be fit. Uh, do you have, I don't know, some some concept of uh, team well-being that you know challenges or stuff like that what's what's the thing in the team so goat is a fairly new team in a year year and a half we obviously we we sit down and have lunch together mm. and people compare notes but i have not uh, we have not created this any activity but in mm. uh, in my previous job uh, flipkart mm. uh, we had this two groups one was a football group where mm you know people who were in flipkart fashion could be part of that group mm. and and therefore a lot of people wanted to shift from other businesses to fashion because they wanted to be part for, of that okay. football yeah. and we had some very very young great players of football mm. and mm. there were people like me who were much older mm. and we used to play every tuesday you should probably stop now saying older <laughs> because you're the guy who started <laughs> playing at a league levels uh, at the age of 35 40 so <laughs> I, I i it's hard to believe that you were older, but anyway, yeah, in football. Yeah. So football, we were playing every evening after office. Mm. At 7.30, we would reach there. Uh. Before COVID, uh, three years, we played ev almost every weekend. Okay. And there would always be at least three or four women also who were beyond the, mm. on the football field. Mm. And this is quite far from office. People would drive there mm. and kick on grass. Mm. And we would play without fail. Mm. And, and, and there I noticed that just because I was regularly doing another sport mm -hmm. uh, i didn't have any injuries during that period otherwise football awesome. six a side yeah. could mm. be very very yeah intense. it's a very aggressive it's a very, very intense sport. sport yeah yeah and therefore it created this culture because after football then you would sit have drinks yeah, together yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean not uh, the uh, hard drinks but yeah, yeah. you'll have a juice we'll together etc yeah, catch yeah, up so yeah. it was a good camaraderie Building in the team camaraderie, yeah. but with running the challenge is that i also created a running group mm. and i would tell people that uh, come to Agra Lake and we would run people mm. in the initial weeks came mm. in but then they would say oh the boss is running away and <laughs> we, are like, we are like huffing and puffing so uh, so then I don't know if someone had uh, someone I don't know if I don't know if Flipkart guys they're watching and listening if they were a better runner so they had this fear that if I uh, you know overtake Rishi it's very hard for me to come back and sit with him because I might be a better runner but uh, I'm but sure yeah. they were better runners yeah but, but no one yeah, showed up no, yeah no so let's say up. you were always a better runner but like it's very difficult to do a team sport in running yeah, yeah, yeah. of course yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah once in a while we go out and play cricket etc yeah. but yeah. there's no group activity Ed but goes, yeah we yeah. would like to start it we would like to start this challenge yeah. of everyone clocking a certain yeah. Some activity, Steps, milestone, yeah, 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 where yeah, everyone can yeah, participate. There's to yeah. be more 
inclusive football inclusive, that yeah. way is much more inclusive many more people play yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah something like step yeah, challenge yeah. etc we would like yeah, to start yeah yeah so people team uh, uh, in the goat team uh, if you guys uh, watching listening uh, rishi wants to make you guys uh, move so uh, pick up any sport pick up any activity and uh, uh, let's see in i don't know maybe 6 months year time uh, you guys should be there amongst all the other competitions and next time when we said rishi should say that okay i was i was talking to um, uh, nitin uh, kamath from zero the other day so even though he, they play as a team uh, multiple sports he say i am not very confident still about my team's ability uh, but uh, in in any particular sport so i hope that uh, goat as a team has a you know yes, sporting yes. Um, culture, uh, culture yeah. and you guys are out there uh, competing um, okay so um, you uh, what's your uh, i mean you spoke about a lot about um, i mean the idea of this conversation when we sat down was to essentially unpack the other side of you right i mean i was absolutely uh, uh, you know surprised and uh, you know great when we f- met first time like there's so much to unpack about you uh, and like you started off saying that you know when you uh, when you're on the other side you think that you know when you see someone on linkedin or on social media you say this person would be this you have this visual image right only when you meet you realize oh no no this person is so much beyond that right so there's always the other side and that was uh, the reason i was uh, very keen to sit down and have this conversation with you so uh, uh, since we talk about linkedin and social media reminds me um, what's your social media protocol like i mean uh, are you like an you go there to uh, to get these signals what's happening in the world or you are going there with a particular intent of engaging with people are you uh, very frequent or you just post and you just don't uh, you know don't think about it i know for sure i mean you're there on strava but strava is mostly when you do a run it gets synced but beyond that uh, realm of social media what's your protocol like yeah so not much on facebook mm-hmm. uh, instagram i check out a lot okay. of the brands are on instagram uh, your job so makes I, you do that now job, yeah. but i don't post that often okay. maybe once or twice in the year i okay. post uh, okay. some pictures must uh, be about your running uh, do you put no, your running not no so much yeah. okay. it's more about family so okay. diwali time just put okay. a picture so okay. friends family they know okay. how things are okay. Uh, okay. progressing uh, twitter i get all my news from twitter mm. and i get all the bashing of <laughs> different yeah. Yeah. sides on twitter but i don't you are actively so engaging I'm not yeah. very active where mm. i am active is linkedin mm. um so on linkedin i'm liking posts i'm mm. posting sometimes mm. and linkedin has been quite useful also in attracting talent, talent. attracting mm. people etc so uh, so that's where a lot of people reach out okay. uh, a lot of people we have hired reached out to me on linkedin mm. or mm. i reached out to people for help on mm. linkedin mm. could have, could have been through a connect or mm. could have been just a cold message mm. Uh, so that's one where i have so essentially on need basis right i mean you're not like you're always there scrolling no, so no. linkedin yeah. clearly i listen more intent. and talk less on social media social media so. <laughs> that's a very good approach yeah so listening uh, reminds me any any are you into podcast is there any no. frequent podcast I, or something no, no. I don't, okay. Yeah, okay it's more reading and uh, yeah okay um, so uh, considering that now you are a fit guy sports guy um, and i know that you do a little bit of Uh, angel investments also so so call out for request for startups right if you had to invest uh, in startups and let's say in health and fitness space is there any particular area you think that uh, look uh, this lacks uh, innovation or this could be an area where if this kind of product comes this would definitely attract let's say your check so is there any particular area you've you've been thinking for a while that no one has started up in this space specifically in health and wellness something comes to your mind <clears throat> i think i think uh, one thing that i've realized is that there are many areas which are very important mm. but uh, nobody gives a complete package right mm. in the sense that nobody solves it completely for you so uh, so for example uh, so nutrition for example mm. right so you might there are various proteins but there are a lot of uh, questions people have about yeah. that or uh, so i think uh, but again what happens is that so many people are in so many different parts of the whole journey that yeah, yeah. um that you have to really see how big that market is right. otherwise what happens is you start to relate to what you need and therefore realize that there are many people see, it mm. has to be more like safola yeah. where 
it's not for the heart patients yeah. but anybody who could be a heart patient which yeah. means all of us right mm-hmm. uh, so one of the startups i invested in is uh, florio where uh, they are and, and this was one of the realizations i had when uh, I, I went to a doctor and he said do you have multi grain uh, atta and my wife and i said yeah yeah we have multi grain mm-hmm. and then he said which one then he says one of those uh, brands in the market he said have you even read the content because most of them have 3 5% mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. other grains and call yeah. it multi grain right yeah, true whereas multi grain should be he says mm-hmm. at least what you can do is get four different yeah. so florio is trying to do that okay. like you can okay. create your own atta or okay. they have oh it's a personalized version you go and tell what <coughs> what composition you want yeah. and they'll create it wow. create it mm-hmm. or they have ready mm-hmm. 10 different mm-hmm. and the beauty is that a large part of your food is atta sure yeah right yeah. I mean, so therefore if you take care of that you mm-hmm. are taking care of 40% of what goes in into your right? body right yeah yeah uh, so that's where i so yeah food food or what you intake could be one large area mm. uh, apart from that is data technology which mm. again is area difficult to get in because mm. there are large brands who have much higher data etc uh, and then the third is clothing footwear where yeah. there's always an opportunity to create right, right, right. a more indian or more right, indianized right. brand yeah. uh, Yeah. but those are broad areas where i have thought uh, right. but not not come across too many different people yeah. coming forward and saying yeah. in health fitness we are yeah so i'm sure this. Uh, let this be a, a bait for people if they are watching and listening if you are into supplements if you can create something which is very personalized and i totally agree with you that you go out in any of those commerce websites or even those health supplement websites and say whey protein there probably nothing does than 20 options of whey protein and you have no idea which one you should choose and why, and why you should choose yeah. that right yeah. so there is absolutely a great uh, need of being uh, coming out with some personalization marker to say that okay if you are here this is what you need and these are things what you should probably don't need and i often get confused even after being in the space for so much of time i am often confused that i just need a simple whey protein and when i search for a whey protein i have 500 options and i have no idea which, which one i should choose for right and if you think of it the ltv is so high absolutely because once you start start getting on to it yeah it's a recurring thing yes it's a yeah. recurring yeah. thing and yeah. therefore while people are all looking at how correct. many customers they can get correct, correct, correct. but here you could have a customer for life absolutely right? it's a subscription yes. business yes right? it's a subscription business right, and right. you could keep having those check in right, and right, figure right. out right it's like medicine you take so right, like right, if right. i'm taking a pill for yeah uh, x ailment yeah Yeah. Then once the doctor doctor subscribes you, then right. you are blindly taking that taking the yeah. same thing. Yeah. You are yeah. not applying your. Mind that is why uh, all the diabetes makers and all make so much of money, money because, because you are hooked to that, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So for startups who are doing anything personalization in supplements, uh, doing anything data driven approach in making uh, consumers healthy and fit, anything in nutrition, if you are building something. Uh, message Rishi, he might be interested to write a check. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, uh, so you are health. Uh, you know health geek uh, you have a ton of uh, variables with you um, uh, what's a recent splurge or indulgence you did uh, you bought something in terms of uh, something to on your health and fitness or anything recently you bought uh, which you thought it's mm-hmm. indulgence but it's worth no it's been my garmin watch, watch. and my heart rate monitor heart rate monitor okay. i i bought a new heart rate monitor and i when i came running i house help i told her to wash the band okay and i think she by mistake wash the sensor also no no sensor i kept but instead of putting it in the washing machine i think she put it in the dustbin <laughs> and very difficult to get that uh, band in india separately, strap yeah, separately. Yeah, 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 yeah. so i bought the whole whole device again yeah, so i have yeah. now two monitors and okay and one but strap, one strap. okay yeah, yeah. anyone has a reverse problem they can take that from me <laughs> okay cool yeah <laughs> one lying in the drawer uh, so you've been a brand guy uh, any any brand which comes to your mind which again in health and fitness space which you think uh, they've done a good job in building that brand uh, any any anything? i think uh, cult has done a okay. great great job in yeah. so it's almost like what uh, they've taken an industry where gyms are seen as yeah boring you know, boring yeah. and you know Old these school. muscular people yeah, there yeah. with a mm. lot of smell and mm. this suddenly they made it cool to go mm. yeah. and attend gym they yeah. made it very easy and uh, i think pre covid yeah uh, it was like the place to Absolutely. to hang around, hang around. And, yeah yeah and and the way the brand was built and i think it was amazing yeah. brilliant uh, 
Yeah, I don't want to give an example of Nike or Apple. Yeah, I mean, those are known ones. Everyone, yeah, yeah. Known ones. But this sure. is right sure. here in sure. Kormangla. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, right here in HSR. HSR and Bangalore and, brand, and, Indian and, yeah, brand. And yeah, built by Mukesh. Yeah. And Ankit was part of it as yeah. well. So these are people yeah. I have worked with. So sure, very, sure, very, sure. Yeah, happy to um, see them. Uh, talk about family. Uh, so uh, you have a daughter and a son, right? Um, so when uh, the kids see their dad going out every day for a run, uh, on the weekend when it's time about catching up and having a brunch you're doing your long run what is their take like uh, are they coming up and saying hey dad we uh, I mean uh, we rarely see you now or is it you see there is an upside impact that they also started um, getting serious about health and fitness so what's have you seen any impact on them because of who and what you do in terms of health yeah, so uh, so a large part of why I'm able to devote so much time is that, uh, so one, two things. One is the family is very supportive. Mm. Second is from very early, they got used to my routine, right? Mm. So I remember in early days, I would carry a big bag and I would play squash, then I play a little bit of tennis and mm. then play some cricket mm. in the, and people would say, how do you, and, and then, you know, it would be like nine to about 12, one on every Sunday and mm. people would say how do you get so much time mm. I said I started playing from 7 to 1 mm. and therefore when I moved to 9 to 1 it mm. was like okay you made some compromise <laughs> yeah. right? so yeah. from very early days they have been used to this routine mm. of mine so it's mm. almost like known that yes Sunday mornings are for mm. his long run or mm. earlier mm. Uh, for sport mm. and every morning and any anyway, kids are mm. in school on mm. uh, the morning time and mm. but the family, including my wife, are aware of that. Mm. Uh, my son, when he was growing up, you mm. know, he was, uh, he, had, he had not really grown tall at that time, mm. about three years back, mm. and he was gaining a little bit of weight. So I put a condition that, you know, and that if you want to play video games, you'll have to run. Okay. So I kind of forced him that for every 10K you run, you will okay. get one hour of video games. So some wow. kind of uh, pact we did. Wow. A gamification. And there. so... He, he, now says that many of those runs he actually walked but okay. but what happened for him was that that age he started running mm. and he also started gaining height okay and if you see his pictures that in one year it's like chalk and cheese right mm. so the guy just transformed so from mm. a shorter guy who had a mm. lot of chubby cheeks mm. he was suddenly emerged into a wow uh, lean you know, he's lean much taller than me uh, okay. and he's very lean wow and now he's driven himself, right? Wow. So he goes to the gym yeah. whenever he feels like he goes for a run or yeah. cycling, etc. So now I, I don't seeing, have to push I him. I think you posted some picture somewhere. He also ran with you. Was it some yes, race or something? Yes. No, so he wanted to do the 5K. Okay. And uh, that was the time when I ran that uh, 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 Delhi Marathon. Okay. One week before was the Bangalore Marathon. Okay. So I couldn't do both marathons. Okay. So I ran with him 5K. 5K. Okay. And I told him what time you want to run. He said, okay. I want to run in 27K. Wow. 27 minutes. So I paced him for 27 minutes and he was very Brilliant. happy to achieve that time. Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, after he got onto that journey, then yeah. I stopped pushing him. Right. Uh, so, but, but there is an inward uh, uh, you know, impact that because they see you doing this yes. uh, yeah. with a busy professional life, what you've got. Uh, they have also realized yes, that okay yes. they also have to move yes. so it comes naturally that because parent is doing and therefore I should also go yes, and do that yes. nice uh, what uh, and this I ask for a selfish interest because I recently became a parent uh, what has parenting taught you about yourself uh, which you didn't know uh, you know was not was something about you which you didn't know and because of being a parent you found out that that's a trait yeah a lot more responsibility while mm. I have mostly been busy at work and my wife jokes that she's a single parent. She has mm. to take care of mm. all of their requirements on mm. week, weekdays and weekends. Mm. Uh, but then you realize that if you are, uh, if you have a busy career, mm. you are actively into sport, mm. uh, then, you know, there is a time that you have to take out and there are some compromises as well. But then, mm. um, you know, how you fit it all in is, mm. is, is one challenge. Uh, second is that you know, a lot of things that you do, you behave, like you just said, uh, kids really take on from you, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to, uh, so you're while you're doing it for yourself, you're mm -hmm. also imbibing those things on, mm -hmm. like we just talked about religion and mm -hmm. uh, briefly, mm -hmm. and therefore the way you think, mm -hmm. uh, while you're not forcing it on your kids, but a lot of things initially, they pick it up as to how, what are the things that you are doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And, 
yeah, we believe that <clears throat> uh, some of these ideals in terms of how you approach your work, how you approach achievement, how do you you not allow age to come in your way mm. are things that they will imbibe as they start their journey of building their career, mm. uh, not get too flustered with early success, mm. uh, sorry, early failures or not get too excited with early success and therefore see that if, if there's this man in the house who's, uh, similarly, my wife is now doing her PhD, which wow. is uh, many years after wow. doing her MPhil. Brilliant. So they're saying there are these two parents who do doing extreme to stuff, yeah, extreme yeah. stuff and, and their odds at their mm. and at age where people are generally enjoying True. their golf or enjoying wow. uh, a comfortable life wow. is, uh, is something which I'm sure wow. uh, kids will yeah. take it positively and imbibe right. in their career That's no shout out to her to uh, you know, to manage uh, the family and uh, go in that academic uh, rigor at an age uh, where most of the people are done right I mean upskilling uh, doesn't come naturally or um, Inward for a lot of people uh, up once you cr cross a beyond age. So, uh, yeah, kudos. Um, yeah, and it comes from how we have seen our parents. Like, sure. my dad has taken up multiple <clears throat> challenges mm. in, his, in his work life, mm. his fitness, etc. And at, mm. at an age of 77, 78, he runs mm. his own business. Mm. He had a very active life in terms mm. of every mm. morning at 4 o'clock going wow. out for his walks, etc. Yeah. And my mom did her... She did a law degree at the age of 55 plus uh, wow. because she said she was a maths professor. So she wow. said, I, I, if I read more, I, if I go deeper in maths, I won't be able to use it because she would stop yeah. teaching at 60. Wow. But then law is something that you can learn. And so wow. uh, poster 50, she did and she topped in her class in law. Really? So yeah, what you see your parents do and achieve kind of you also see other right. age is just a number right. and you right. can right. and right. I'm sure my uh, children would no, age is certainly a number which you have proved because if you chose to start playing a uh, competitive sp uh, big sport and play competitively at uh, you know at an age where uh, you're not at your physical prime that kind of clearly says and you know this is one reason Rishi I'm so fascinated to talk to people like you and uh, you know other guests I want to kind of bring on board is this other side right and that's the intent of this podcast to uh, to kind of unpack and uh, kind of unravel this other side of this so much like you're talking about your parents your mother went on to do a you know a law degree at an age where people are done they're retired right this is just fascinating and uh, you know and I hope uh, people listening watching get this intent uh, you know out to them that you know there is um, uh, no right time or you're never too late uh, you know especially health and fitness, they, you're never too late. You, it's about just going out. And, and I remember, uh, uh, you know, uh, you telling me the other day that um, you were partying uh, uh, someday and uh, late and uh, you, you you had a lot of food. And the other day you realized, no, I, I was not feeling good. And you went out and did a 25 kilometer run late, late in the morning, right? Um, and these are some amazing mental models, which I, I really, really hope, uh, uh, you know, people kind of uh, uh, get this as a cue to kind of start incorporating in their life. Uh, I want to close this conversation. It's just been so amazing. I, I could go as long as possible and I'm sure we would have to catch up in many more runs, but just to kind of put it on the record. So for startup founders and corporate executives, um, what is your one thing? Uh, and You know, it doesn't come easy. For Like I said, uh, people are celebrated today for the grind uh, and people kind of put it out there, look, uh, I only slept for one hour and it's a big deal for people to throw it out there, right? So all these people who just want to go and make a move, the first thing, uh, let's say today I want to get out and start thinking about my health. What is that you have to tell them that, hey, uh, this is what probably you should think uh, to kind of just get moving? It could be anything. Uh, what is that they should, how, how can they just get started? Yeah, so... Uh, I was at a conference yesterday and met a lot of the industry CEOs there and mm. a lot of people were yeah, uh, talking about my running, but they were also asking me about startups. So mm. I'll say a few things which I believe work for both, right? Mm. So one is do what you love, right? So take up a sport or take up a next career option mm. if you really like it, like doing it. Mm. Otherwise, just because somebody else has been successful at it, if you don't enjoy it and if you don't really believe in it, sure. you may start it, but then after some time, mm -hmm. and same with sport, you mm -hmm. say, okay, my neighbor is playing baddie, I'll go and play baddie. Mm -hmm. If you don't love playing baddie or you... Second is, uh, like somebody asked Warren Buffet that you keep investing 
everyone can see where you are investing. Uh, why are they not able to follow that same strategy? He yeah. says that everyone wants to make money quickly, right? And therefore, uh, be committed for a longer period of time, mm. right? So, if you start a business or you start a sport and you believe that success will come quickly, and therefore you will say, okay, mm. I start playing golf and I reach this, 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 it won't happen. Mm. So you have to commit that, okay, I am in it for next four, five years, let me see where it goes, right? Mm. So therefore, if you give it time and you love it, then, and third is, you have to really commit yourself. You have to put yourself in that discomfort and some of the commitments are get an expensive coach mm. or get a tough coach or quit your job. If mm. you're doing it in a side saying, okay, let me do it, let me try if it works, I will do it, you will not. So. If you don't put yourself in that position where uh, there's no option of out, you would do it for a few days yeah. and then you will be back to your normal because the yeah. inertia of not doing it is mm. is very, very high. Mm. So I think these three principles, take up something you like, plan to do it over, over the long period and get committed to it either through uh, a guide coach, guide yeah. coach, etc. It should not be that, okay, I bought an expensive pair of shoes, so shoes, now it's start it. running, it yeah, isn't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, commit to it, take a goal, yeah. uh, announce it to people yeah. uh, or whatever, but put yourself under social pressure or yeah. economic pressure to really go up and get that goal. Yeah. I think then you get on to the path and then you know, as you go deeper, it really keeps pushing you forward. Brilliant. Uh, very meaningful. Uh, uh, last thing which I often ask everyone uh, who comes on the podcast is that uh, imagine you got a 10 second prime time uh, yeah, uh, access uh, in any prime time uh, show. You got ten seconds. Uh, you're not you're not allowed to sell goat or any of your brands, uh, but you have uh, this billion people or more uh, watching you and listening you. Uh, what do you have to tell them? You got ten seconds. Uh, okay. Uh, so so I would like to tell them that you know. Uh, I have had limited talent, a lot of perseverance and a lot of drive. Uh, I think if you depend a lot on perseverance and drive to achieve something, it's possible. And whatever I've talked about today as well, uh, I want to give out the message that it's not about I have something going for me or I was hugely talented or I had all these opportunities really sitting on, um, you know, sitting for me to take take it up. but. Really, once I made up my mind, if you are, if you just go after it, saying whatever it takes, I'll get it done. It is possible. So yeah, if if I if I could do it, anyone can do it, and that's the message I would like to give people. Brilliant, Rishi. I mean, it's just um, no, it's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you again um, for finding this time, uh, and um, uh, and there's so much more about you. But uh, of course, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, this is what we could kind of condense in this uh, short conversation and. Uh, I really hope people get uh, some access to you to find some uh, way to run with you or play a squash or tennis where they can find the other side of you. I absolutely loved uh, knowing this other side of you. And um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much. And uh, it's, it's just and just to kind of second to what you said, I can totally uh, second to that, that uh, knowing you now a little uh, uh, you clearly are not coming from a privileged background and uh, you know someone as an outsider going into that court uh, going into that marathon and going into that boardroom telling that look I am here to learn and then kind of acing the game uh, I think we need more and more such people to come and talk their story so thank you Rishi for you so uh, uh, coming yeah. on board and uh, having this conversation I absolutely loved and enjoyed it and I, I really hope people watching and listening also do that. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for for this interesting conversation. And uh, yeah, I would also like to tell people that since I met Dilip, I said, okay, now you have to coach me towards the next That's stage it. of improvement. So I have put him in a spot. So he's now yeah. helping me get better at running. And I'll probably yeah, so announce my time in a year. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good luck for it. So if Rishi doesn't get to his time, people know whom to blame. <laughs> it's either me or uh, Rishi has made it clear that he is going to be consistent. So something had wrong, gone wrong with his uh, training. But uh, or blame uh, it on age. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that is certainly time not time. there because you have proved it wrong. But uh, uh, good luck for uh, Tata Mumbai Marathon, and um, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Rishi. much, Dilip. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you for listening and watching the entire podcast. 
quick update Rishi finally finished his Tata Mumbai half marathon in a time of 1 hour 45 minutes. That's approximately 10 minutes faster than his goal time. Now I would love to get your feedback. You can leave comments here on YouTube and reach out to me on LinkedIn, Twitter or by email. Details of all are mentioned in the description. And also include your suggestions on other guests I should be speaking to. Thank you and I'll see you again soon on the other side with a new guest.